Hi, so good morning. Welcome to this another series lecture. Today we will discuss level measuring devices. So in this lecture, we will explore the basic operation of the following. Number one, how level is being measured using sight glass. Number two, float sensor. Number three, ultrasonic sensor. Number four, differential pressure transmitter, DP transmitter or delta P transmitter. And at the last part of our discussion, we will take a look at how these level measuring devices are being incorporated in a closed loop control system. Okay, so let's get started. Hi, right, so before we proceed, let us take a look first at how these level measuring devices are being integrated in the industry or on board ship. So the common example that we can find is in the engine room simulator is the diesel in the diesel generators so what as what we can see here so yan this value here is uh, measuring in 22.1 here is measuring the level of the lob oil okay the lob oil inside our diesel generator okay so as of this moment uh, may alarma tayo na naka low level yan so what we are trying to do here is we have to fill this one, okay? We have to fill this one from the lube oil storage. So let's take a look at how this operation and how this value changes, okay? So, so yan. Yan yung level natin. So first thing is we have to acknowledge first the alarm and then sinailan natin yung alarm and then let's open this valve para makapasok yung lube oil natin. And then, as what we can see, yung level ng L natin is increasing. So, yung unit natin dyan is in terms of percentage. That's what we can see sa lower part. Ito. The lower part na dyan, 36.%. So, yung unit nyan is percent. So, yung percent natin kung uh, anong level na yung uh, lube oil natin inside our diesel generator. Okay, so we will stop that one at around 70, 70%. Okay, so yeah, around 70 now, so we can stop the valve. And then, let's take a look at the level of our lube oil. Okay, so now we can see that uh, the value is 73.55%. So that is why... It is very, very important. There are a lot of applications that we can find level measuring devices integrated, especially in automation. So that is why in the later part of our discussion, let us take a look at how these uh, level measuring devices are being integrated dun sa closed loop control system natin that we discussed in our first lesson. Okay? So let's, go, let's start with the categories of the level measuring devices so there are two common categories so we have one direct sensing the number two we have the indirect or the inferential sensing okay or inferential method so let us start first with the direct sensing so the direct sensing the actual level is monitored okay the actual level mismo ng for example too big ba or a solid or a liquid material inside the tank. Okay, so first is sight glass. So sight glass belongs to direct sensing. Number two, the float sensor. And then number three, the ultrasonic uh, devices. So all of these three are the basic uh, devices used for direct sensing. Okay, so let us start first with sight glass. So in sight glass, this is the simplest method for uh, direct uh, visual reading. Okay, sight glass. So, from the word itself, sight glass. So, parang naga sight sight lang ka, diba? Sight glass. Tanaw ni mo, makita ni mo ang level. So, you can uh, see the level using the, using the glass. Kasi transparent siya. So, in the industry, ito yung itsura niyan. So, for example, if this is our tank here, and yung tank natin, of course, hindi natin to makikita. Pinakita lang natin yan for Transparency purposes para makita natin yung yung level na tumataas. So, yan. So, ito yung sight glass natin. As what we can see here, 
Okay? Yung sight glass natin, eto makikita mo yan, transparent na yan, itong portion na dito. So, makikita mo sa sight glass kung ano yung level. Okay, yan. So, the common characteristics of a sight glass, so, glass gauges are cheap, very cheap, but easily broken since glass are fragile materials, madaling mabasag, and should not be used with hazardous liquids. Why? Bakit hindi pwede? Kasi of course, basic concept, pag nasira yan at pag nabasag yan, if yung laman ng tank natin is hazardous material, so we are risking our uh, engineers to uh, high risk, very high risk. So hindi pwede na you are using sight glass and then hazardous material yung, yung laman dyan. So should not be longer than 4 feet. So dapat eto daw, hindi hahaba ng 4 feet. Uh, cold liquids can also can cause condensation. So, pag may condensation yan, mahirap na yan basahin. So, ang ginagawa dyan, uh, diba, may basahan ka, tagyan mo to ng basahan. Parang yung condensation, guys, yung basic concept ng condensation is yung pag nagda-drive ka sa sasakyan, diba, pag malamig na lugar, hindi mo makikita, parang nagpa-fogs, diba? Nagpa-fogs yung term natin yan. Nagpa-fogs. So, kailangan mong uh, i-wipe yung yung window natin para makita natin. So, that's condensation. So, yan. So, pag mga malalamig daw na lugar, uh, sight glass is very hassle kasi nagkukondens. It creates uh, moisture. Okay? So, should have shut off valve. So, shut off valve natin, alam natin yan as a marine engineers, future marine engineers, the shut off valves are being used dito banda. So, dito banda, dapat may shut off valve. Ang purpose ng shut off valves natin is if you are going to replace this uh, sight glass here, i-close lang natin yan. I-close natin yung shut off valve natin. So, yung liquid, hindi na makakadaan dito. Then, we can now replace the this one, yung sight glass natin. Uh, so, very important na dapat may shut valve yung uh, system natin. Okay? So, next is the float level sensors. The float level sensors, eto makikita natin dito. Dalawa yung klase. So, we have the pulley type, tapos the angular arm type. Okay? So, yung pulley natin, the basic concept ng pulley, ito yung pulley natin. Diba? Sa physics natin, we solve the tension here using the, yung mga Newton's law. So, in this case, uh, ito yung pulley system natin. Okay? So, madali lang, if this uh, level rises here, so there will be an equivalent changes here. Okay? And then also, sa angular type natin, Pagtataas to, di ba? We can imagine this one here. Pagtataas yung level natin, eto tataas, yan tataas. So, eto, eto, pupunta yan dyan. So, magpupuli yung indication natin dyan. Okay? So, taas. At saka pag bababa naman, mababa naman yung level ng liquid natin dito. So, pag bumaba yan, bababa yan, eto yung float valve natin, pupunta yan dyan. So, at the same time, this value, yung arrow niya, pupunta dun sa, sa empty na, uh, empty na side. Okay, so, that is the basic operation of a float level sensor. So, almost independently, independent of density of the liquid or solid. So, density, alam natin, the density, the formula of density is equal to mass over volume. Okay, so, ibig sabihin, well, it doesn't matter kung anong laman nito, so it is almost independent. And accurate and robust, and then linear output with uh, level height. Okay. So we can also replace this one Yung previous kanina, eto Diyan yan banda We can also replace this one with a potentiometer Okay, potentiometer Yung nakikita natin, yung parang ganyan Ito, this is a potentiometer Yung mga nakikita natin Doon sa mga, sa volume load Volume, volume na ganyan So yung nilalagay natin, yung tinitwist natin Potentiometer yan so the potentiometer, this potentiometer helps helps convert the level of the level of water here to an electrical signal. Okay, paano ba natin kino-connect yung uh, potentiometer? Diba ito guys, that's what you can see here, ito magro-rotate yan, ro-rotate dyan. So for example, tataas, ang, tataas yung level dito, ito rotating count, uh, clockwise. Tapos pag Bumababa yung level natin dito, yung rotation nito nagka-counterclockwise, di ba? Counterclockwise. So, in this case here, 
etong nab na to, eto yung dito kumo inoconnect. Nagro-rotate yan, nagro-rotate. So how does this uh, potentiometer converts the level to electrical signal? So eto ngayon, eto the other leg is connected to the supply, the other leg is connected to the ground, and then this one here is connected to uh, that this will serve as our reference voltage. So alam natin in our uh, electro one that uh, sa voltage drop natin, a uh, voltage divider natin. So pag nag adjust tung knob natin, the voltage here will vary. So nag change yan. So nag pag na full dito, pwede natin i-configure na full voltage yung kuha natin. Tapos pag dito naman, pag nasa empty side siya, pwede natin i-configure na uh, at a lower voltage. Okay? So why is it na we have to convert this one to an electrical electrical form? Kasi it is very difficult to transmit in a mechanical way. So yung electrical signal kasi natin napakalayo ng control room natin. Tapos for example, ilang metro yung yung uh, tank na mini-measure natin. So mahirapan tayo na na uh, i-transmit yung signal from one point to another. So that is why uh, the most convenient way is to convert the signal into an electrical form para mas madali. So at the same time, dito banda, pwede din natin itong replace ng potentiometer around here para iikot yan, iikot. Same with yung kanina. Okay? So that is the uh, the float level sensor. So let us now proceed with one of the most common sensor. This one is the ultrasonic level sensors. In our laboratory next time, we are going to use this kind of sensor to measure the level of, of liquid. Okay? So, let's take a look at the operation here. So, yung ultrasonic level sensor natin, dalawang component yan. We have the transmitter and then we have the, the receiver. So, yung transmitter natin, magsisend yan ng sound waves, magsisend yan ngayon ng sound waves, and then, magsend ng sound waves, yan, nagre-reflect yung sound waves natin, and then, yung reflected waves natin will be, of course, uh, received by our receiver. Okay? So, how, paano ba natin mamimeasure yung level or yung distance from this point to the object? So, balik natin yung concept sa physics natin from our velocity. So, yung velocity natin is equal to distance over time. ba? And then, Yung velocity of this particular ultrasonic sound wave is given man yan. Okay? Standard man, hindi man yan change so, Siguro, if there is a little bit deviation, ako uh, konti lang. But that is approximately equal to, the velocity of the ultrasonic waves is approximately equal to uh, 340 meters per second. So, ibig sabihin yan, if the velocity is given, and then we can get the time Okay, for example ba, magpa-start ka ngayon ng oras, so start, timer start. Then you can compute here the time uh, the time that it takes to travel this, to tra the, the, the signal from this point to this point, makarating dito sa ating receiver. So kaya nating ma-solve yung time. Hence, we can solve the distance. Okay, so let's take a look at some example here para mas makita natin. So, ito naman, ito yung uh, ultrasonic sensor if we're going to use this one in in the, in level measuring, level measurement. Tingnan natin. So, ito yung ultrasonic sensor natin. Nag-chain, nag-transmit yan ngayon ng signal and then the echo will be received by the receiver. Transmit, receive, transmit, receive. Okay? So, that is how the ultrasonic level sensors are being used to measure uh, level, especially in a closed, uh, closed tanks. So, let's try to solve some problems related to this uh, level measurement para at least mas ma-appreciate natin. So, for example, ito yung uh, picture na explain natin kanina. So, yan. So, the total travel time according to this one here, to this particular problem is 3 milliseconds. Okay? So, from the transmitter, okay? So, 3 milliseconds daw before the receiver received the signal. So, solve the distance 
Okay, take note, ah. Solve the distance from this sensor here to the object. So, hanapin natin yan. So, first is we have to write the formula. So, the formula is equal to velocity is equal to distance over time. So, since the unknown is the distance, we can cross multiply that one and then solve for our uh, distance. So, the distance now is equal to, kasi magkukross multiply yan, yung time natin, cross multiply sa velocity. That is why yung distance is equal to velocity times time. Or distance is equal to velocity times time. Okay? So, yung velocity natin, as stated sa previous slide natin kanina, is 300, approximately 340 meters per second. So, yung distance natin, if we're going to substitute this one, 340 millisec uh, meters per second times 1.5 milliseconds. Sir, bakit naging 1.5 millisecond yan? Pag eto naman natin, yung given naman natin is 3 milliseconds. Okay, so take note guys, yung sinusold natin na value dito is hindi yung total distance travel. Yung total distance travel dyan is from the transmitter to the object to the, to the receiver. Tingnan mo, balikan yan. Yung total time dito is balikan, di ba? Transmitter to object to object to receiver. Balikan. So yung gusto lang natin na measure from the transmitter to the object. So isolve natin, so we can directly solve Ilang minutes yun, ilang seconds yun that it took the signal to travel from the transmitter to the object by dividing the total travel time divided by 2. Okay? One half here and then another one half to the receiver. So that is why 3 divided by 2, that is 1.5 milliseconds. Multiply lang natin yan, but take note. Diba? Sa previous slides natin, previous lectures natin, in order to solve the problem uh, properly or correctly, you have to be consistent with your with your units. So in this case here, uh, meters, okay, baka ma-confuse ma tayo, this is not meters, this is milliseconds. So that is why yung seconds natin dito at saka milliseconds, dapat uh, uniform yan, ano yung unit natin. So that is why the easiest way is to convert these milliseconds to seconds. Ba? So pag milli yan, millimeter, so, milligrams, so, two grams. So, ang ginagawa natin, yung decimal point natin, i-move lang natin to the left by three decimal places. So, kung 1.5 beer, kung nandito yung decimal places, decimal place natin kanina, so, move three decimal places, so, one, two, three. At saka, you write some zeros dito sa mga bangag. Okay? So, yan. So, 0. 0.0015 seconds. So, yan. You can use now your calculator and then cancel the seconds. Seconds. Cancel yung seconds natin dito and we can, we have a unit of uh, meters. Multiply natin yan. So, the distance between the sensor, okay, between the sensor at saka yung object is equal to 0 0.51 meters. Okay? So, as simple as that. So, now, we will take a look at uh, indirect Sensing. So, in which property of the liquid such as pressure is sensed to determine the liquid level. Okay? So, hindi yung physical quantity mismo ng object ang minimeasure natin to determine the level. Gamit pa taong backup, gamit pa taong laing quantities. No? Such as pressure. Okay? So, the most common na ginagamit dito is yung ito, differential pressure transmitter or DP transmitter. Delta transmitter. So, this transmitter senses the difference in the pressure between the two ports and produces an, a signal with reference to the calibrated pressure range. So, dito banda is the high pressure. Dito banda yung pressure natin. And then this one is the low pressure. And then the electrical port, the electrical signal will be processed here and then dito magkakonvert yan. So, in order for us to understand the basic operation of a DP or delta P transmitter, let us take a look at some examples here. Ayan. So, yan yung tank natin. So, the moment, empty yan. And then, we have our uh, DP transmitter. So, the high pressure side is connected here. And then, dito naman, the low pressure side is uh, connected above. Okay, normally guys, the basic configuration of the DP transmitter, it is uh, placed at the lower part. So, parang may butas dyan. Okay? So,
So, yan. And then, the electrical signal will be sent to the control room. May wire dyan. Yan yan papunta sa control room. So, yan. So, this portion here, this is our high pressure area. We will take a look at, uh, we will measure this one later on. And then, of course, dito banda, yan yung low pressure area, uh, low pressure natin. Yan banda, we, we will put some values there. And then, the difference between the high pressure and then the low pressure, HP minus LP is just the delta P. So, as what we discussed from V6 or thermodynamics, the delta stands for change. Okay, so in this particular case here, the case here, the change in pressure. So, to get the delta P, we, j we will just have to subtract HP, the value of HP here, uh, with our LP here. Okay, and then, yung 100% natin, inakalibrate natin dito, na if the value na makuha natin dito is if the delta p is 80 okay uh, by the way this uh, this mmh2o it means uh, millimeter in water okay so this is a unit of pressure a uh, unit of pressure yan so we configure this one pag yung at 80 yung makuha natin na uh, delta p it means that yung level natin is 100% Okay? So, in this particular case, ha, let's, let's make it clear. So, pag makuha natin na delta P dito is 80, it means na puno yung tanke natin. Okay? And then, of course, pag zero yung makuha natin, it means na empty yung tank natin. Okay. So, sa electrical signal naman, yung sini, sinisend ng uh, DP transmitter natin, may maximum at saka minimum value. So, ito yung 20 milliamperes at saka 4 milliamperes. So, ibig sabihin yan, if this transmitter will send 20 milliamperes to the, in the control room, ibig sabihin, napuno yung tanki natin. At pag 4 milliamperes naman yung sinend niya, ibig sabihin yan, uh, empty yung tanki natin. And then, of course, the, the value of the current that will be uh, sent to your control room, magbabari yan, depende sa level dito. Okay, kung nasa gitna dito, nasa gitna din yung value natin dito. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. So, yan. For example, empty kasi to. So, yung pressure at the low at the high part is zero. Of course, sa low part naman is zero. So, yung delta P natin dito is zero. Kasi, zero minus zero is equal to zero, of course. So, if the delta P is zero, ibig sabihin yan, yung level natin dito is level ng water natin is approximately 0%. So pag 0% yan ngayon, this uh, this uh, pressure transmitter will send ano mag anong amperahe yung isi-send niya. In this case here, since empty to, magsi-send siya ngayon ng 4 milliamperes. So send siya ng 4 milliamperes kasi empty and then the control room will interpret this one. Ano ba yung 4 milliamperes? So, mag-display mag siya doon sa digital uh, LCD doon na, oh, this is 0%. So, yung level natin is 0%. Okay? So, the next case is, yun, tumaas. So, eto na, puno na siya. So, the pressure here is 100 millimeter in uh, water. So, dito banda is the high pressure, dito banda is the, the low pressure. So, bakit mas taas yung pressure dito sa ilalim? ba Alam natin na yung mga, sa mga nakikita natin ng mga movies sa uh, mga diving-diving, ba Or if you have experienced diving, so the more you go to the deeper part of the, the sea, the more na uh, tataas yung pressure natin, ba Yung mga submarine, pag Bumaba pa siya ng bumaba. So, sisira yung mga submarine. Parang ganyan. So, the, the concept here is the same. So, at the bottom part of your tank, mas mataas yung pressure natin dito. So, the delta P, as what we said earlier, subtract mo lang yung uh, HP minus DLP. So, in this case, 100 minus 20, that is 80. So, 80 natin, it means na yung kalit sa calibration natin, 100% na yung tank natin. Okay? So, the... Sensor, sige dabi, so anong, anong level ng, anong kuryente ng 
ano kuryente ang ital transmit ng DP transmitter natin? Of course, this is 20 milliamperes. Bakit? Kasi uno man yung tanki natin. So, of course, this DP will send 20 milliamperes. So, pag nakasend na ngayon ng 20 milliamperes yan, so the control room will interpret this one, ha? Ah, okay. So, the level is 100%. So, puno yung tanki natin. So, let us now take a look at how these level measuring devices are being integrated in a closed loop control system. Okay, so, ito yung tanki natin. This one is an ultrasonic sensor. Yung na-discuss natin kanina. Ito yung violet, guys, na hindi yan water, ha? That is the sound waves. That is inv invisible waves, ha? Pero oh, nilagyan lang ng color nito para at least visible makita natin ha, na there is a transmission of sound waves. Then ito, yung bulb natin. Then this is the indicator kung ano yung kuryente na tinatransmit niya. So yan. So ibig sabihin yan at kung low level natin, kung naka-low yan, yung calibration natin indicates na yung dito is 4 milliamperes. Same kanina, 4 at saka 20 din. So, yung high natin is 20 milliamperes. So, yan yung calibration natin. And then, of course, this is the block diagram. Na-discuss natin from the previous lectures. Okay? So, ano ba yung process natin dito? The process is, we want to monitor the level of water. Yan. Monitor natin yung level of water natin. And then, for in this particular case here, ang gusto natin is ma-reach niya itong uh, 20 milliampere, the, the high portion here. So, yung set point natin, iset natin na, uh, okay, ang gusto ko na ma-receive na signal is 20 milliamperes. Okay? And then, the controller here is around nandito. Siguro, nandito yung PLC niya. And then, yung control element natin, control element natin is this bulb here. Ayan yung final control element natin. Okay? So, let's take a look at the process here. Okay, pause muna natin. Supposedly, tuloy-tuloy yan, but in order to analyze the scenario, i-pause muna natin. Then, let's take a look at some values here. Okay, so anong nami-measure niya ngayon? Tingnan natin yung gauge natin, ang nami-measure niya nasa gitna. Ano bang gitna ng 4 at saka 20? So, around 12 milliamperes. Okay? So, yung measuring element natin, this one here, the ultrasonic sensor, yan yung measuring element natin, ang value niya is 12 milliamperes. So, yung measuring element natin is 12 milliamperes. Yung comparator ngayon, okay, yung comparator compares two variables. The variable from your set point and then the variable from your measuring element. Kino-compare niya lang. Ito kasi yung gusto niya. Yung gusto niya is 20 milliamperes. So, kino-compare niya kung yung nami-measure ba niya is equal to 20 milliamperes. Okay? So, yung 12 milliamperes ba? 20 is equal to 20 milliamperes? No. So, there is an error signal there. So, yung error signal natin is, yan, 8 milliamperes. 20 minus uh, 12. So, ibig sabihin, yung controller na, oy, may error signal. Ibig sabihin, hindi ko pa na-reach yung gusto kong marating. Okay, so the controller, since may error yan, will send a control signal. So, yung control signal in this particular case, okay, so the error natin dito, yung 8 milliamperes natin, this 8 milliamperes will serve as our error signal. Ito yung mag-input natin ngayon sa ating controller. And the controller will interpret this one na, mm -hmm. So, may error pa. Anong kagawin ko ngayon? So, the controller will decide na it will send a control signal na on. On or logic one. Okay? So, on sa control element. So, ibig sabihin, yung control element, takbo ka pa ng takbo. Kasi hindi ko pa na-reach yung gusto ko. Nasa 12 pa lang ako, yung gusto ko is 20. So, dapat mo pa, may 8 pa ako na nakulang. So, kailangan mo pang tumakbo. Yung pump ka, kailangan mo pang mag-pump ng water. So, ibig sabihin yan, nag-send man siya ng on signal, the control element natin will continue uh, in on state. So, that is why, as of this moment, makita natin sa next scenarios, dapat tuloy, patuloy, patuloy pa yan ha, mag-feel ng water. Okay, so let's continue. Tingnan natin, ano bang mangyari? Ayan, nagko-continue siya. And then, let's take a look and then pause. Let's pause for a while. Okay, ano ng value dito? Ano ng value ng measuring element? Okay, 
Ang measuring element natin, that is approximately already 20 milliamperes. Okay? Yung na-measure niya ng ultrasonic sensor natin dito is around 20 milliamperes. So, therefore, papasok yung signal natin dito sa ating comparator, compare niya dito sa ating set point. So, the comparator now will ask, same ba yung set point at saka yung measuring element natin? So, the error signal is zero. Okay, minus lang niya, approximately zero. So, the controller will decide, na ha, wala na palang error signal. So, therefore, interpret ko nga, okay, na-reach ko na yung gusto kong marating. So, dapat magsisend na ako ng control signal na off. Okay, send na ako ng control signal na off. So, therefore, yung control signal natin na off, papasok sa dito ng control element. So, the control element will understand na off siya. So, therefore, mamamatay siya. Okay, so let's take a look na tuloy-tuloy yung scenario natin. Okay, drain muna natin. I-drain pa siya. And then, okay, pag 20 na yan, dapat papatay na yung, yung bulb natin. Let's take a look. Yan. Okay, pag umabot na siya ng 20 ngayon, ng high, automatic, mamamatay na yung, yung valve natin. Okay, so that is the basic concept of how the level measuring devices are being integrated in a closed-loop control system. Okay, of course, the main reference for this lecture is the Introduction to Instrumentation Sensors and Process Control by William Nunn. So if you have some questions or clarifications, Please comment down below the video and I will try to answer your questions as soon as I can. So good luck and see you.